Hey everybody, it's Derek Kilmartin from CodeOpinion.com. Everybody loves to blame eventual consistency. You'll hear things like, well, users are seeing stale data, or something updated and another service they didn't get it. Eventual consistency is not the problem. It's fine. What the problem is, is using it in a context that just simply doesn't work. So let's go some examples and illustrate why it doesn't work and where it actually does really well. So let's first start with an example of eventual consistency that I think a lot of people struggle with, specifically with event sourcing in CQRS, just as an example. So we have our client make a request, it calls a command, there's some command handlers processing that. Maybe we got some type of domain model that ultimately emits an event that we persist that to our event store. Then our request goes all the way back, the command's done. The problem lies here is that oftentimes we then have that client make a request to a query to some type of read model. It's hitting that read model, that read database. The problem is it's stale, it's stale data. It's not reflective of what that command is. So the client gets back stale data. In the meantime, what ended up happening is we have some projection that's taking that event, that's processing it, and then it's updating our read model. So what happened? Eventual consistency. We had our client make a request, the command, some type of state change, publishing a persisting an event to our event store, and then reading from our read database, and it wasn't updated. But that's just one example of how eventual consistency happens, but it's all over the place with read replicas and distributing data between services. Before I get to more of it, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event data, data platform that feeds real-time business-critical data with historical context in fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. Now, this is just an example with event sourcing, but fundamentally at the root, it's very similar to what a lot of systems do, which is asynchronously change the shape of data from what it is on the right side and change the shape to something that's more optimized on your query on your read side. But it doesn't even need to be that complicated. It could simply be our database, whatever we're using, that has replication that's done asynchronously via uh, log shipping, bin log, etc. So we make our state change, then we go and try to read it immediately from our read replica, and we get stale data because that log shipping, uh, bin log, whatever, whatever type of replication is asynchronous. Now in either scenario, you have two different data sources that are eventually consistent. That's actually not the problem at all. Typically what the problem here is the context. Specifically, when you're trying to read your own write, and I was illustrating that actually in the slides, is that you as a user or an end user is performing some action that's making some type of state change. And then the application, as again, from your perspective, is immediately trying to show you that data from that other source that's eventually consistent. That's why you're seeing stale data. Eventual consistency isn't the problem here. It's the context in which you're using it in. That context is you're trying to read your own write. Now I'm gonna get more to this as the video goes on, but if you weren't trying to read your own write, meaning somebody else is trying to read it, that potentially isn't a problem because they don't know it's happening. So if you have a, one user making that state change and you have another user reading something related to it and it has that stale data, they don't know it's stale. Now, if you are in a situation where you're trying to read your own write and it's causing stale data issues, etc., I am going to provide you some examples here and solutions to it. But the first solution to this, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, is oftentimes we have problems and we try to come up with technical solutions to these problems when the answer is don't have the problem in the first place. Now, maybe you didn't make the decisions that caused this situation, so you just want solutions. I get it. But maybe the first solution you come up with is, how can we get out of this so we don't even have this eventual consistency issue? And the first one is, just read from the primary. That just means reading from somewhere that you know is consistent, which is the primary. So if we make that state change, and then we immediately make a query, call the primary. Do whatever you need to do in terms of infrastructure to know that in these situations, after I perform this right, if I'm gonna do a read, then just read it from the primary directly. Now, if you have to read from the read replica and you don't want stale data, this could be for performance reasons, you don't want the load on the primary database, you simply need to wait. You simply wait for the lag time from the database to replication, which you should be able to get that number from depending what database you're using. Just wait for that replication lag to occur, whatever milliseconds it is, and then after you know that surpass, then you can then perform your query and you'll know you'll get fresh data, basically being able to read your own write. Now, obviously the trade-off here is you're adding latency to your writes. 
Now, in most systems that are read intensive and not write intensive, this may be okay to be adding that little bit of latency. If you're doing something like event sourcing or just have projections in general where you're building out a read model, they could just be a part of that initial command, that initial request, so that you don't return to the client till you've actually updated the projection. But again, you're adding latency to your writes. Another option is using versioning and client polling, similar to what you'd use with optimistic currency. So we specify our version, we make our state change. Then when we perform our query, we knew what the version was. So when we get it back, oh, it's V1, that's not it. Then we make a request again. Or instead of client polling, you could be using something like WebSockets. We're actually pushing back to the client when the update occurred. So when something was actually processed. If we have our domain model, the example with event sourcing here, but again, this applies to anything where you're asynchronously processing. Subsequently, we can make a query. No, it's not there. But when our event handler, that projection updates our read database, then it can push back to the client saying, yes, here's the updated information or go ahead and query again. Now, this is all trying to solve the problem of reading your own write. As a user, if I make some type of state change, perform some action, I do not want to see stale data. That's the frustration. I want to see the data relevant to the action state change that I performed. However, that does not mean you need to throw out eventual consistency. In somebody else's context, a different perspective or different user, if these see the data once after it's updated in your read model, that can be totally fine. So it's not one or the other. Half the battle here is reading your own right. Now, another major issue people run into with eventual consistency is just data ownership and where data lives and trying to use that data to enforce some type of business rule. Here's an example. It seems more and more are trying to distribute data via CDC and events. So we have service B, making some state change to its database. We have some CDC service picking that up. It's hopefully making some translation of that data so we're not exposing the underlying schema of service B, but I digress. So then it's publishing that to some broker, some event log. Then we have a completely different service, say service A, picks up that event and updates its local cache copy, if you will, of that data from service B. So here's a very simple example why distributing data and then using that data from another bound tree for business logic purposes is kind of disaster. Now, yes, there's all kinds of technical solutions to what I'm about to illustrate. However, again, are you, do you need to have this problem? Do you need to add more technical solutions to a problem that you don't need to have? So my example here is sales makes a call to billing and credit to see if a customer has available credit to place an order. Let's say at this point it does. So we persist the order to our database. Then we're publishing an event to our message broker, topic, event log, whatever the case may be so that billing and credit can receive that to update its information to know what the balance is or the available credit for that particular customer. Then let's say we have some concurrent requests here. So sales, same thing happens, makes that request. Yeah, we're fine, you have available credit. We place that order, we publish our event, but uh-oh, we make another request before we even process that event and even updated our billing and credit. This request is coming back, yeah, absolutely you have available credit, even though we haven't processed that message asynchronously yet. Now, yes, this is a contrived example because you probably have more orchestration workflow around this, but it still goes back to the point of, are your boundaries correct? Are you making a call to another service to get information to perform some type of action within your own boundary? Meaning, is the read enforcing some type of business rule? Whether you're calling some separate database or another boundary that's eventually consistent, are you trying to do that read to enforce some type of business rule? Is the reader the same actor as who just wrote? Going back to the read your own rights. Will stale data cause irreversible effects or break trust? Break trust from the user in terms of they perform some type of action and they're not seeing that data. Or is somebody making a decision, some critical decision, based off the information you're showing and that information is incorrect? Places where eventual consistency work best are probably places you really already realize. Things like reporting. If you have any type of reporting where you look at a report and it says as of some particular time, it might not be as of when you actually ran the report, it's as of when that data was last updated. If you have any type of ETL process, analytics, BI, you know you're looking at inherently at a point in time data and it's not something relevant based off reading your own right. At the end of the day, most of the complaints and issues I hear with eventual consistency 
are self-inflicted. It's using in a situation that just really isn't appropriate at all. That's really what it comes down for me. It's half time, it's like, well, we have to be using this read replica everywhere in the application. So then you have read your own write issues. Or we're propagating data and then we need to call this date this other service service to get some data so we can perform some business logic. Well, you're kind of forcing yourself into coming up with technical solutions, again, for problems that you probably don't need to have. But as always, get in the comments and let me know your experience with eventual consistency, where it's been a real pain for you and where it's really worked out well. What's your situations? Get in the comments and let me know. And thanks again to everybody that supports my channel. I really do appreciate it. If you wanna support my channel, the link's in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.